Okay, what we're going to do is a really short introduction to the poem called The Lammas Hireling. Before I get you to read it through, what I'd like to do is explain one or two of the words in the poem. So um, the first word here, Lammas, um, that's the time of the year. And it's the festival of Loaf Mass, which uh, is a very traditional festival from the 1st of August. And it's when help will be hired for getting the harvest in. Um, when it talks about a cow with leather horns, um, what that's talking about is a hare. It's like a really old fashioned nickname for a hare. Um, muckle means much or a lot of. And elf shot is when everything goes wrong it means really really bad luck um, then just here it talks about how he spends his nights casting ball from half ball from half crowns and what that means is melting down coins to make bullets okay so that's the difficult language in the poem or kind of old-fashioned language in the poem the other one which you might not know is a hireling and that's basically someone that you go to market and you would pay a price to hire them for a certain amount of time um, and again this is something that was done in the countryside um, probably about 100 150 years ago in a rural setting maybe even more recently than that so um, this is how the poem goes after the fair i'd still a light heart and heavy purse he struck so cheap and cattle doted on him in his time mine only dropped heifers fat as cream yields doubled I grew fond of company that knew when to shut up. Then one night, disturbed from dreams of my dear late wife, I hunted down her torn voice to his pale form. Stock still in the light from the dark lantern, stark naked, but for the fox trap biting his ankle. I knew him a warlock, a cow with leather horns. To go in to the hair gets you muckle sorrow. The wisdom runs, muckle care. I levelled and blew the small hour through his heart. The moon came out. By its yellow witness, I saw him fur over, like a stone mossing. His lovely head thinned, his top lip gathered, his eye rose like, a, like bread. I carried him in a sack that grew lighter at every step and dropped him from a bridge. There was no splash. Now my herd's elf shot. I don't dream but spend my nights casting ball from half crowns and my days here. Bless me, Father, I have sinned. It has been an hour since my last confession. So it's a really, really strange little poem. And this is what the poet himself had to say about it. He says the poem's called The Lammas Hireling. It's based on a story I heard when I was in Northern Ireland out for a very late night walk. A local person pointed out a house, he told me, was where the local witches used to live. And in their tradition, witches would change into hares. And when the father was dying, his family was very embarrassed because the father's body was turning into a hares. And this bloke told me the story that he attended the funeral. And the last thing you could hear was the hares' paws beating the lid of the coffin as they lowered it into the ground. Hare stories are sort of found all over England and Europe, in fact. There's one rhyme in this that I suppose it might be helpful um, for people to have pointed out. And that's the one, to go into the hare gets you muckle sorrow, muckle care. That's from the Annals of Pursuit, which is a North Country witch's child restored by Robert Graves. A cow with leather horns is another name for a hare. If you think about it, you'll see why. The story is a farmer gets a young man from a hiring fair, which is how labour was engaged well into the last century, and takes him home with him and finds he's got more than he's bargained for. Now, if we um, have a look at the poem, what you'll probably find when you read it through the first time is you kind of pick up lots and lots of bits and pieces and lots of kind of fragments of meaning, but it doesn't seem to make an awful lot of sense on its own and it's meant to not make sense it's kind of meant to be deliberately really really ambiguous um, so if we read through the first stanza um, this is where the farmer is talking about going to a, a country fair and looking for someone to hire um, and he managed to get hold of this hireling for really bargain price. What he finds straight away is the um, cattle 
all seem to absolutely adore the man that he's just hired and the calves that they're having were only female calves which is great obviously for a dairy farmer because they're making milk and they're really fat healthy cows the yields doubled so he's making lots and lots of profit from the milk and it sounds like he's quite a lonely man because it says i grew fond of company that knew when to shut up so he really enjoyed the company of the hireling but you kind of get the idea that they enjoyed being together in a silent kind of way then in the next stanza we find out that the farmer is in fact a widow he um has been dreaming about his dear late wife and here we get this kind of ambiguity of gender in a way he thinks he hears his wife's voice so he hunts her down and finds the hireling but the hireling has absolutely not a stitch on and has been caught in a vicious trap um, and when he realizes that's happened he realizes that he's a warlock or a male witch um, who turns into a hare at night like in the story that the poet just told us on the previous slide and he he's kind of really confused the farmer really really confused it's almost as if he's been strangely attracted to the young to the young hireling and he tries tries to kill the warlock and as he kills him and the moon comes out the hireling man starts turning into a hair i saw him fur over like a stone mossing and again that idea of kind of um gender confusion or kind of muddled up sexuality in that description his lovely head now it's thinning and turning into a hair um and as he carries him in a sack he's turning more and more and more into a little hair and then he kills him at the end um there was no splash so obviously he's so tiny by now that he doesn't even disturb the water and as a result of this his herd has become cursed now and troubled um he's not making money from his cows anymore um he doesn't have pleasant dreams of his wife uh, or any dreams at all he you get the feeling he's just kind of almost pacing up and down making these bullets as if to defend himself kind of real sense of paranoia there um, and then at the end um the um, speaker of the poem kind of turns from speaking to us the reader to speaking to a priest or a confessor he says i have sinned it has been an hour since my last confession so again we get that kind of sense of paranoia there because if it's only an hour since he last confessed clearly he's got something on his mind and can't lay that to rest um so it's something that's bothering him a lot now i don't want to go into the technical detail of this poem too much i want you to have a go at that on your own but some of the things that i did notice a quick read through is the sound of the language um so we've got some half rhyme but it's happening at the beginning of the lines and we've also got some repeated kind of consonants and so stock still stark naked and then warlock the sound there so we've got some quite harsh k sounds going on there and then we've got the muckle and the muckle repeated and they're really kind of chewy words that you can get your mouth around and um, we've got the repetition at the beginning of and a heavy purse and cattle doted on him as if it's building up everything that's good which is coming to him now and then as things start to go wrong for him what i noticed in the structure of the poem was a lot more caesura so you can see these full stops in the middle of the line and at the beginning when everything was going well we had much more kind of regulation rhythm and punctuation eight beat line and then when the kind of the change of mood comes then one night you can see how that structure starts getting disrupted okay what i'm going to suggest for you is that now you have a look at this video here all you need to do is a google search 
for the Lammas hireling. It'll be about the fifth or the sixth hit down. And someone's made a really, really beautiful video to accompany the poem. Um, and I think it's well worth the watch. The video is about nine minutes long. So if you can do that, and then your homework is done. <laughs>